Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Comfort Park. Chris, please come in. So today, um, Chris has been sending me some messages and I'm gonna go over a key concept using the messages that I'm gonna answer. So a um, couple of episodes back, Chris grabbed me, right? And I released the grab. And then uh, another episode, I talk about how sometimes you don't even want to release the grab. Like if you're doing a basic warm up exercise, like a lasso, and Chris grabs, I don't want Chris to let go because then it becomes a trap. So one of the questions is, yeah, but what happened if Chris bombs it? I was here to stop me, right? When that happens, it doesn't matter. Because as soon as he bombs out, he actually disengages his rotator cuff. This part is really weak, so it's easy to release the grab. But I think that. Looking at the questions, we're still missing the point. The point is, I am not neutralizing 100% force. Go as strong as you can, Chris. This is 100% of Chris's strength, right? And I'm dealing with it. And I can't make it work, but if I use my body, it works. However, <laughs> however, when I was doing off application, I'm not actually releasing 100%. I'm only releasing 10% of his strength. The reason is, as soon as I hit him, rather I'm in contact or not, I have to distract him. As soon as I distract him, his strength will go from 100 to 10. Which is also the same if you do other basic warm-up exercises, like a pox away. From here, if Chris decides to punch me with a round shot or something, I'm not dealing with 100% of his strength. Because as soon as Chris hits like that, as soon as I hit him twice, he lost power. Now I'm only dealing with 10%. Or if Chris grabbed my wrist whenever he wants, right? I'm not dealing with 100% because I'm hitting it. Likewise, if Chris tackle or something, right? I'm not dealing with 100% when he tackle. As soon as I touch him like this, I'm only dealing with 10%. Or a Chris kick. As soon as I feel him kicking, well, I hit him and I step on his foot and trap him. Right? So the idea is, just like the grab, you're not neutralizing 100%. As soon as I distract him. I'm not dealing with 100%, right? Or even if he came into a straight shot, like he is now, it doesn't matter. I'm not dealing with this entire mass if I'm getting him. Now he don't have much left, right? When we come back, we'll talk more about this concept. All right, guys. So today I used a basic exercise. It wasn't a fight because I wasn't, I barely touched Chris. I didn't make any contact, right? Wasn't using any power. Um, but even with the basic con concept, where a basic exercise, where, where I was dealing with grabs and punches and kicks, the whole idea I'm trying to get across is that you're only dealing with 10% of the man's force if you hit them first or distract them, even if you don't touch them. And I used this example before in other clips. If someone is benching like 100 pounds in a weight room, and right before he's about to lift the weight, you punch him in the head, of course he can't lift the weight, or you'll probably drop the weight, right? So your strength is controlled by your mind. If you mess with the guy's mind and balance, then he loses strength for a second. So in all Wing Chun techniques, we're not chasing the hands. Zhou Yi, but Zhou Yi That means you only chase the center. If you chase the center and the guy can't deal with it, and you're hitting his center line, then he loses strength. So rather you deal with punches, kicks, or grab, any martial art application, you are not directly dealing 100% of the guy's force. You're only, dealing, you're only dealing with 10%. That's one idea of using the guy's force against him or not fighting force with force. Usually in martial art, when we talk about not fighting force with force, automatically people think I mean, I mean people mean evading the force or blending with it, redirecting it. That is true. But another way to do it is simply to mess with the guy's mind so he can't use his strength in that moment. That's another way of not fighting force with force. And that's a key concept of Wing Chun. Even when you play Siwing Tao, what are you doing solo, right? You know how we do times are really slow and then we go into Wu Sao and we go into Folk Sao in the first section? It is true you're learning La Sao Chia Chung or forward pressure, forward intention with these new structure that you're learning. That's one layer of it. But another mindset, another thing you're learning when you're doing this is that no matter what, you're going forward, you're not chasing the hand, even when my hand is moving backward in Zulunta, my mind is moving forward. That's one of the key concepts that is usually missed. So when people do application, one of the most common mistakes is they're actually dealing with the guy's force. Instead of dealing with the real problem, the guy's root or his center, and then only deal with the leftovers and only deal with the minimum amount of force of the opponent. Because his center is the general, his hands and his legs, they're just the soldiers, right? So that's the root and these are the branches. You should deal with the root of the problem. 
And that's one major mistake that I see people do when they do application. So when I'm teaching courses on my website or live before, I make sure there's a step-by-step -step progressive training program so people can digest this idea that whatever application they're doing, they're not dealing with the guy's force 100%, but dealing with the root of the problem. This is easy to say, but it requires progressive training, right? So if you're interested in this kind of work, please go to adamchankofu.com. We have the Wing Chun 1 to 6 program in the full immersion with Wing Chun and non-Wing Chun material and progressive training programs. Okay, see you next week.